All right, we're back again. Uh, I just ate a submarine sandwich because I'm a chunky monkey. Uh, let's go back into our rate, mechani rate mechanisms here. Uh, we already looked at the previous where a, um, we had a slow initial step and then later steps were fast so that in that case, if our first step is slow, if it's rate determining, we can just use that rate from that first step to compare to the overall rate. Um, but if we have a fast initial step, that's going to be a little bit different. This is the other example, and this one would be much more complex. So in this example, we have these three uh, elementary steps. The first is fast, the second is slow, and therefore rate determining, and the third is fast. And you can see there's sum up to this overall rate, and this is the observed rate. So how do we look at these steps? Which ones do we need to uh, determine the rate for? Which ones do we need to... Um, sum or, or multiply together to figure out what the overall rate is. So let's go back into here, let's write these out. Um, so we had our first step, which was fast. And typically, you're gonna see fast steps also being written uh, reversibly. So we can see this can proceed in the forward direction and the reverse, reverse direction, sorry. And then we have our second step, which is slow. And typically if it's a slow step, you're gonna see a single directional arrow there. And then lastly, we have this third step, which is also fast. Now, since this step is fast, we can actually um, leave it out of the equation essentially. Um, it's not going to be rate determining. So the only reason we have to look at the first one is because it's happening before the rate determining step. So you can see um, what's going to happen is here we go. Is as that reaction's proceeding, we're getting products and we're getting more and more and more products. And they're starting to, they're, we're making them very, very, very quickly. And um, eventually, we're gonna have like a stockpile of products. At that point, if all of a sudden we have a lot of products and the reaction's reversible, well, sometimes then the reverse reaction is gonna happen. And some of those products are gonna go back over to the reactant side. Um, so what we have to do is figure out, is there a part or an, an element, something in this fast step that's related to the slow step and that we can then substitute in. So for the fast step, we have, again, this step now we're not concerned with. We've determined the rate determining step. It happens before this. So we're gonna leave that third part of the reaction out. So I need to write a rate expression for this fast step. Well, in the forward direction, it should look like that. Just the NO, the reactant squared times K1. This is also going to be reversible, though. And because it is reversible, because we will see that reverse reaction occurring to some degree, we do need to write the reverse reaction. So we're going to call that rate constant k to the minus 1. Uh, we could call it k2. It's whatever. It's whatever we want to call them. It's going to be a constant. And in this case, if we're looking at the reverse reaction, that's that. So now this is our reactant right there. For our slow reaction, we'll call that rate constant K2. We have H2 and we have N2O2. So this should uh, be the rate expression for the slow elementary step. Well, we'll notice that I have N2O2 present in the second slow step and I have N2O2 right here in that reversible expression. So I need to rewrite this expression for the fast step so that I've isolated N2O2, I've isolated what that is equal to, and then I can substitute it in right here. So all I'm gonna do for that is if I wanna isolate N2O2, I'm gonna divide both sides by K to the minus one. So my concentration of N2O2 is gonna be equal to K1 over K minus one times the concentration of NO squared. 
So I can take that value now and substitute it in for N2O2 in my um, slow step. So what that's going to look like is K1 times K2 divided by K minus 1. We have H2 from that uh, slow step. And then in the place of the N2O2, we're going to finish the substitution. That's going to be NO squared. So technically, or I guess what it maybe would, would look better is if um, you saw initially where I came in K1 over K minus one times NO squared. That's the same thing as my NO2 from over here. Um, but what I can do and make it look a little prettier is just keep all those constants together and keep all my um, concentrations together. So this is what we should see now for the rate determining slow step. And these constants, K1, they're all constant. So a constant times a constant times a constant is, or divided by a constant is a constant. So that would be our normal K. These should multiply, divide out to the actual K for my rate constant. So this can simplify to K, concentration of H2, times the concentration of NO squared. That should be the overall rate uh, law or rate expression. So if our actual experimentally determined one is equal to this, then that validates our reaction mechanism. If we ran this reaction and we determined experimentally what the rate law was, and it was something different, we would know that our hypothesis of these rate law um, elementary steps and their speeds, fast, slow, which one's rate determining, would not be valid. And we would need to go back and, and look at the reaction again and hypothesize a different set of steps. Um, so the slow, if the first step is slow, it's very, very easy. You can just get the rate law from there. You can see here if the first step is fast and the second step is slow, it's a little more involved, but it really just comes down to substituting in um, that fast rate expression into the slow step. Um, so we'll stop that. We'll go back to here and you'll see, if you didn't see before in the slide, that's essentially what they're doing here. Um, here's our fast step in the forward direction and the reverse direction isolating that N2O2 because it's in the slow step as well. And then what does that look like when we put that in there? What does that give us as our overall rate? And we'll notice here, it does match the observed. So this should be a valid uh, rate mechanism. Okay, uh, so we'll stop there. Definitely try some of these problems. Like I said, the slow, where, where you have a first slow step, they're very, very easy. So what you want to do after maybe only one or two of those is try to find some examples, some end of chapter problems where your first step is fast and your second step is slow or is rate determining and make sure can you get to that same rate expression. Uh, so we'll stop there. Hopefully this was helpful. And uh, one more video, I'll tell you a little bit about catalyst.